destination, Tibet. The spring of 2001. A group of volunteers are en route here for a very special mission. Hi, I'm Yvonne. I haven't bathed for five days. And I'm very happy that I brought extra underwear for the expedition. Hi! Tashi Daleg means welcome or hello in Tibetan. <laughs> Welcome to Tibet. Operation Tashi Daleg is an expedition group organized by Operation Rally Singapore that's headed for the village of Songduo. Their mission is simple. Hold up in this remote terrain, they have six weeks to build a school from scratch. Songduo village lies here, 4,000 meters above sea level. A town with no piped water or electricity. Once there, the team will live exposed to the elements under extreme climatic conditions in snow, hail, rain and sleet. For the uninitiated, it will be quite a test. The mastermind of Operation Tashi Daleg, Wang Yuen Lik, is no newcomer to building friendship schools around the world, having been involved in similar efforts in Belize, Mongolia and Myanmar. The idea for the expedition came to Yuen Lik when he went to China on a survey trip. In Songduo, he found a school in need of new classrooms. Its roof was leaking and there were only two cramped dormitories for over a hundred students. Yuen Lik sprang into action and enlisted the help of peers from Operation Rally Singapore. Once a ton of official paperwork had been sorted out, it was time to recruit the volunteers. And the response was overwhelming. Over 600 Singaporeans from all walks of life volunteered for Operation Tashi Dale. I'm 34 and I want to do something with my life. My name is Anor Zali. Uh, Hi, I'm Lisa. Hi. Hi, my name is Tan Yok Wang. I'm Lisa. Call me both. The committee made it clear to everyone that getting on this expedition wasn't about serving a noble cause, though. It was really a chance for volunteers to learn from others and grow in character. At the end of the day, the organizers had a tough time deciding who would make the cut. Uh, he's the kind of guy that you want expedition. And who wouldn't? Three is students, inexperience. Only one out of five will make it to Tibet. Next destination for the venturers was here at induction camp. Yes, go me, show us a few. It's a place where everybody had to get to know everyone else over one weekend and get a crash course in camping out. The venturers got to taste each other's cooking, learn how to dig toilets, and figure out camp basics from scratch. Here is a part of the shopping list for anybody surviving. Sunglasses, toiletry, sunblock, lip block, and thermal wear. But the more serious aspect of the induction camp focused on the goals of Operation Tashi Daleg, reminding everyone that building a school in Tibet is an opportunity to discover something about the world and about themselves. Each of them had to write a letter to themselves before going, detailing what they hoped to achieve. At the end of the expedition, they'll come back and find out if they've succeeded in some way. But before anyone can go, there is one important thing to do. $30,000 must be raised for building the school. Fundraising is actually part of the instrument for us to uh, gel them up as a group. A bonding session. The venturers went out in full force to make the Singaporean part with his dollar. You want a blueberry one? Quite nice, you know. You want this one. So we, uh, we intend to build a separate building 
for for lodgings and uh, for for studies. Yeah, contribute late the day, bro. Okay, thanks. Man. Any more, any more will do. <laughs> With the funds in place, the team looks ready to go. The plan is to complete the school in two phases. The first group of volunteers will stay for three weeks to lay the foundation. The second phase will finish the building. Meanwhile, an advance party will head off first to Tibet to set up the camp. It's a daunting task, but somebody's got to do it. To help boost the morale of the operation, local star Mount Everest climber Ku Sui Chow flagged the first phase of the expedition off. Travelling to Songdor village takes four hours from Highway 318, an eastbound route which links Lhasa with the city of Chengdu in Sichuan. It's a restricted route which few travel on, but every turn brings the venturer closer to nature. The Songdor Valley is home to three villages of some 1,000 Tibetan nomads. The elevation and steep terrain make it impossible to grow anything except grass. The venturers are greeted by a faulty door that needs some fixing before they can enter the school. Although advanced planning has been done, the team is somewhat disoriented by the lack of oxygen. A good thousand meters higher than the city, the air is far thinner in Songdor. Fortunately, despite the freezing cold, many villagers came out to help. <laughs> and the camp's critical provisions will be stored here in the classrooms. <coughs> Later, when the new school is built, these classrooms will become new dormitories. In 15 minutes time, the mutton has to start cooking. Okay. Have you finished cutting it up yet? Go faster. Hi, my name is Priska. Um, I've not got a lot of sleep actually because I kept waking up at night, I was um, too paranoid of oversleeping and not being able to feed everyone at breakfast. The job of feeding a hungry camp of 60 venturers at breakfast is a gargantuan task. For the kitchen crew, there's no time to lose. Everyone gets a chance in the kitchen and no one is spared, not even the camp's doctor. On most days, the food's quality is an issue, and it doesn't help that the venturers have no experience cooking with high-pressure cookers. The living habits of the Tibetan builders at the worksite testify to their hardiness. They have arrived with little more than what's on their back and live comfortably in temporary quarters, a dilapidated hut just next to the school. They were really skilled, they were really good because the rocks would all come in different shapes and sizes but they just could make it into one straight wall and we actually taught them some simple English and they taught us their Tibetan, it was really fun. I love it, I love it, I love it. Rocks! You love rocks! <laughs> Among the Tibetan workers are two distinct crews, the masonry workers and the carpenters. The new school has to be constructed in the Tibetan tradition. With no electricity in town, the four classrooms will have large windows facing the north and south to catch the How light. Are you? Oh, thank you. Under the skillful hands of the Tibetans, the school building progresses steadily. This forces the venturers to work even harder at stacking up the stone wall, which is needed before the carpenters can begin work on the roof. All in all, it's back-breaking work for the venturers each day. After three weeks in the mountains, the first phase has come close to achieving their building target despite their rough start. The school wall is tiled up to the roof. Well, almost. The new group of venturers will rendezvous with the first group in Lhasa. 
and this time they are going prepared for the dreaded acute mountain sickness syndrome that slowed everyone down. Treated with a drug called Diamox, the group hopes it'll help them to stave off AMS. I'm bringing Bakwa for the expedition leader from his girlfriend, so I think that will boost morale a lot more. <laughs> We've been put on Diamox, so hopefully we can adjust better and complete the job faster. Because they felt that the first batch wasted a lot of time and a lot of extra expenses to ferry the people around and to stay in extra accommodation. So I think this time around they want us to adapt a bit faster and hopefully with less problems. But will Diamox do the job? Only time will tell when the venturers arrive. Lhasa, the rendezvous point for the two phases of the expedition. Man, we are in Lhasa. Uh, don't, don't remind me of how I feel, okay? I'm not trying to feel anything. Everyone in the new group is on the alert for symptoms of acute mountain sickness. Uh, so far, no sign of the dreaded AMS, huh? Anybody? No one? Seven venturers in phase two have doctor's orders to stay on in Lhasa to acclimatize. The rest get their last snacks before setting off for the expedition site, Songdo. As the bus brings them closer to their destination, the venturers know they are traveling in one of the most pristine regions in the world. It is as if time has stopped here and the country has remained one big national park where only the fittest survive this rugged and beautiful terrain. After a long ride, the venturers finally get to use the loo. gallons of water every day. In this region of central Tibet, just about every water source feeds into the great Yalung Tsang Po. The Yalung Tsang Po meanders for 2,000 kilometers in Tibet alone before becoming the Brahmaputra River in India. The camp gets its daily water supply from one of her many streams. First, the venturers must filter the water with cloth to remove any stones and dirt particles and treat it with iodine before use. As the snowfall dries up and the skies turn blue, Zali is nominated as the Project IC to lead their first workday. Hi, my name is Nurzali. I'm from Good Day. I'll be your Project IC for the next three days. They told me that it might be difficult uh, because I don't know Mandarin, so I need to converse with the Chinese woman there. We are still on Diamox, and uh, once you stop Diamox, for those who have not acclimatized, they would, would have some effect on them. I was told not to push the people too hard. The first task is to plaster the school walls. And in Tibet, they use mud, which will keep the interiors cool in the summer and warm in winter. Now there's more than meets the eye here, but our eager venturer Sudesh wants to give it a try. The Tibetans think he'd have a better hold without gloves. Try it all way. The trick, as his patient teachers show, is in a strong throw. In his third attempt, Sudesh finally triumphs. Phase two basically, they just flow into the system and they basically have the chance have the opportunity to see the completion of the buildings. They'll be doing all the painting work, the cementing, waterproofing, the roofing. They'll do the designing also, paint, and after that, we'll have a closing ceremony.
looks simple, you know, just passing. But the mud can be quite heavy, and after like passing 10, 20, you can feel that you are actually panting. And especially with the thin air, you sort of pan a lot more. The 60 volunteers of Operation Tashi Daleg are on the last leg of their expedition. However, the project is far from complete, having been plagued by incessant rain. Well, the school term is beginning, and like it or not, it seems that the venturers have to pick up speed to finish the school. As a school, it offers three years of basic education for 110 kids, from the ages of 7 to 15. I really smiled a lot when I saw the kids coming back. It really means something for the venture to see the kids come back. They know who are they building the school for. These are like the future who benefit from the building. And if I'm venturous, see the point why we come here, that's important to me. Taking a break from the toil, the venturers have some fun and break the ice with the kids. The children, shy at first, quickly warm up to the venturers. Only half the children here will complete their rudimentary education. Thereafter, keener students will need to move on to a proper primary school located in a bigger town. The sight of a football gets everyone excited, even in Tibet. The children can't wait to score against the new goalpost that's been fixed up for them. Since yesterday, we have stopped building on the school. Apparently, they need to decide some things about the school. So now, we are actually filling up the holes in the compound of the school with rocks so that later they can top it up with soil and level the ground. The venturers try to make themselves more useful instead by fixing up the old school, which will be converted into dormitories. There are 110 students enrolled, many more on a waiting list. With the new classrooms and expanded dormitories, the school will finally be able to absorb everyone. Six more days to go, six more days to go. This is heavy. I'm uh, mastering cement to the wall. It's quite a quiet skill though, so we have to try it for about half an hour before I can hang on it. Okay, I'm slowly getting it. Not so bad. My basic role is uh, providing opportunities for them. Everybody has different uh, lessons to bring back to Singapore. Not everybody is working hard on project side. And some are really working very hard to until the extent that they fall sick. Some people can smile all the way. Anything. When they're sick, they still smile. These are some qualities that people can learn from each other. With just six days left, the entire expedition has opted to stay put. They have decided to forego any R&R &R time to meet their deadline. The high morale is doing good. With just four days to go, the expedition hits on a winning design for the school and gets down to the details. We try to retain as much of their culture as possible. We talk to them, they would prefer more flowers or animals, no cartoons, and uh, they want a lot of bright colours. I thought about it a few days and I was pretty stressed out over it until one night the design somehow just popped up and I came up with the lotus flower and the sunflower design. 
this represents Tibet because Tibet has a lot of high mountains, whereas Singapore is a flat land. And uh, we have come together to plant a seed, okay, and that's the seed here. And uh, the flowers bloom, that's when the school is complete. They're water-based actually, so it's water-soluble. That's why we have to put up the toppolin, so you know, in case it rains. But I'm, I'm quite worried law, that we won't get to finish it on time. News that the school might not be completed as planned brought the children to the work site each day after their temporary classes at the truck stop. They wanted to help in any way they could. Judging from the children's eagerness, they too are looking forward to their new classrooms. Even at an early age, the kids seem to know what they're doing. They chip in with a little muscle and speed. Bolstered by the children's presence, the venturers and Tibetan builders rush to put the finishing touches on the school. And when the whistle blows for the very last time on that last evening of work, they have managed to paint all but the back wall of the school, which the visiting crowd at tomorrow's ceremony will never see anyway. After their lessons, the celebration to mark the handover begins, and villagers both young and old have come from far and near to witness the fanfare. I could tell a great closing ceremony for the day, plus the beautiful weather to make it more extraordinary. We had a lot of fun dancing with them, the harvest dance. Even their parents participated in the dance. Adventurers surprise everyone with an improvised lion dance. After the celebration, the expedition prepares to leave for Lhasa immediately. The venturers scuttle to break camp. For expedition leader Yuan Lik, who conceived and began organizing the expedition a year ago, it's finally all come together. He had wanted the school to be bigger, but acknowledges that everyone did their best. I did not expect this building design to be so complicated. The window I did not expect is so intricate, the door so difficult to make. I didn't expect that. So the official says that in a way they have under budgeted. Tanzun was waiting for me, and I smiled and followed by tears. Diary, it was the saddest moment in my life. But life goes on. Love, Zara. Many share the same sentiments, but while the expedition may have come to an end, the new ties forged amongst the venturers and with the Tibetans and Chinese are just beginning. As for Yuan Lik, he's delighted with the performance of the volunteers. Though at the heart of it all, it's always been about the children. Listen to the song. They're sung by the children in the village. And you know what's one of your purposes here? You're building a school for them. For the 120 Rally Singapore Expedition Volunteers on Operation Tashi Daleg, the past six weeks of sweat, sickness and sacrifice have all been well worth it in the experience of a lifetime.